It's morning news on New Day from the news up here at Adesawe in Accra. I am Wendy Lai. Coming up. President Ekufado says government will renegotiate portions of the concession agreement for the new Temer port. Management and students of Ghana Institute of Management and Public Administration, GIMPA, haggle over registration fees and end of semester examinations. Six persons standing trial for the murder of a teacher at Isiakwa remanded into prison custody. Meanwhile, the Ghana National Association of Teachers, NAT, has requested its members resume classes, assuring them of peace protection. And in business, interest rates projected to fall as a result of the low reference rates and stable macroeconomic indicators. And on the firing front this morning, China earlier today reported surprisingly weaker growth in retail sales and industrial output for April. Let's start with our stories. And President Ekufado says government will renegotiate portions of the concession agreements for the new Tema port. He gave the assurance after a closed door meeting with the leadership of the Maritime Dock Workers Union and the unionized staff of the Ghana Ports and Harbors Authority. Here's a report by Josephine Frimpong. TV3 has gathered that a government committee to be made up of the Ghana Ports and Harbors Authority and the Maritime Dock Workers Union would set up to review the agreement to ensure a win-win for both the developer and the authority. The president is waiting for a legal opinion from the Attorney General's office to map up strategies to renegotiate the relevant portions of the agreement. Minister for Transport has engaged with you on several occasions at my behest. But then the way the matter was being escalated in the public space, especially by yourself, I felt that um, it's only right that in the system of government that we have, that you engage with me directly. So I, that is why I extended this invitation for you, for us to come and sit down and talk brass tacks. Um, we are dealing with a, an important foreign investor in our country. And uh, we all of us have to use a lot of this to get what we want. The meeting was necessitated by the recent agitations by the Maritime Dock Workers Union and GPHA staff. In 2015, government signed a 35-year contract with Meridian Ports and Services, NPS, to develop a container terminal at the Tema Port. However, an inter-ministerial committee report had raised issues with a contract indicating the authority would lose out on container business. The $1.5 billion investment was sold to International Finance Corporation. But some clauses of GPHA losing container jobs, which will translate into employees being laid off, was a worry. The bigger issue is the fact that um, there, there had been exclusivity rights um, guaranteed within the concession agreement that what they are doing, um, no company can do so, can do the same business. And it is also going to take away a lot of container business from GPHA and on the chain too. There are terminal operators like TCT, um, there are Steve Dog companies, there are labor um, um, uh, companies like Ghana Dog Labor Company. They are all going to lose their jobs. But Meridian Ports and Services disagrees. This isn't a threat to GPHA in any shape or form because GPHA is a 30% shareholder inside this company. So basically it cannot be a threat to them. It's not a threat to the shareholders. Government has approved a 35% upward adjustment in the salaries of railway workers across the countries. Minister of Railway Development, Joe Gatti, made this known on the sidelines of a media interaction in Tema. The railway workers for the past two years have demanded an upright review of salaries, demanding a 50% increase. But the sector ministry declined insisting government was cash-strapped. The workers 
summoned the Ministry of Railways, including Finance, to the National Labor Commission for ruling. After deliberations, the NLC agreed the government should adjust the salaries of the workers. Currently, through the Minister of Railways, Joe Gatti, government has announced a 35% increase in their salaries. Again, the sector minister asked allied workers with the railway company limited to facilitate the construction of railway lines across the country. He again urged the workers, especially those who work on the manganese unit of the ministry, to pull all their efforts for enhanced salary. But I also want to encourage them that the same way that they've opened the Accra to Tamalai, the same way that they are tomorrow they are opening the Saumlai, they should go and open the line to uh, Takwa. They themselves should do it so that they get their money and share their own money and nobody will quarrel with them. Meanwhile, the sector minister has interacted with aggrieved railway workers to ensure that their grievances are being attended to. Let's focus on education and there was some confusion between management and students of the Ghana Institute of Management and Public Administration, GEMPA, over payment of fees and ongoing end of semester exams. TV3 has gathered the school authorities refuse to allow students who have not registered to write their end of semester exams. Some students were sacked from the hall during the examination, but some of the students argue they were given between May 13 and 17 to register, even if they owed but have not been able to register as a result of some technical challenges. Now, to another trending education story, and the six-person standing trial for the murder of a teacher have been remanded into prison custody. Now, these persons allegedly brutally assaulted a 55-year-old teacher who died shortly after he was sent to the hospital. The teens have been charged with conspiracy to murder and murder. Four of the suspects, Richard Anani, Emmanuel Mriku, Philip Okodie, and Paul Boedu have been charged with conspiracy to commit murder and murder. 55-year-old teacher George Somua, a tree and religious and moral education teacher at the Asiakwa Salvation Army Basic School, Asiakwa, was assaulted by the accused persons on April 25 at Asiakwa and died on May 4 at the hospital. Lawyer for the accused persons, Peter Nimo, prayed the court to grant his client's bill, but the Kibi district judge, Alice Efuya Yurenchi, remanded them in police custody to appear on June 25. Some teachers and members of the national leadership of the Ghana National Association of Teachers, NAT, were at the court to give their solidarity. Now, Students Loan Trust Fund has served notice to publish the names of defaulters and seek legal action against beneficiaries of the scheme. Out of 55,000 persons due to repay their loans, 22,000 of them have not made any attempts for payment arrangements. And here's a report by Jocelyn Wood. The Student Loan Trust Fund was instituted in December 2005 under the Trustee Incorporation Act 1962. The principal objectives of the fund is to provide financial resources for qualified Ghanaians undertaking accredited programs in tertiary institutions. The fund disburses loans to over 35,000 students in 105 tertiary institutions across the country. Authorities say Although beneficiaries have an average of eight years to repay at a rate of 12%, recovery rate stands at 62%, but could be better. With no money coming from government, repayment is currently one mode in sustaining the scheme. We are almost 50 million Ghana cities is in debt. Um, we have only about 22% or so or less of borrowers who are not paying, and it's, it's this category of people that we are trying to reach out to now. 
the situation is affecting timely disbursements of loans to beneficiaries. Our financial situation could be better. It's not a secret that we've had some delays in paying loans to students this semester, but we've been paying in batches. Um, and as I speak, we've paid over 10 million to students. There are still some students that are yet to be paid. Head of Public Relations, George Ferguson Lane, said employers and guarantors have a critical role in the recovery of loans from defaulting beneficiaries. Employers should make it part of their duty to deduct the loans from source of their employees. I mean, it's, it's, it's a moral and legal obligation. The trust says it has begun an outreach program on the need to repay the loans to sustain the scheme. Now to business and director of Fidelity Bank, that's the director of finance at the bank, Atta Jan, says interest rates will fall as a result of low reference rates and stable macroeconomic indicators. He made the observation at Integrity Magazine's round table on macroeconomic stability here in Accra. Interest rates in Ghana averaged 18.03% from 2002, reaching a high of 27.5% in March of 2003 and a record low of 12.50% in December of 2006. In 2017, Ghana recorded interest rates above 30%. Today, interest rates hover around 26% while the reference rate set by the Bank of Ghana has dropped to 16.19%. At Integrity Magazine's forum on the theme, Ensuring Macroeconomic Stability Through Effective and Trusted Banking, Director of Finance at Fidelity Bank Ghana, Atajan, expressed optimism. Cost of funds to the lending public will be moderate in the coming months as the new benchmark interest rate, the Ghana reference rate, GRR, continues to fall. He noted the crisis in the banking sector was a direct result of economic instability. The reference rate is the foundation upon which lending rates are calculated. It replaced the base rate, which was the reference rate for banks, in the determination of lending rates in April 2019. It is a weighted average using various macroeconomic indices, including inflation, the BOG policy rates, and the Treasury bill rate. The reference rate is released monthly and is determined by a seven-member committee comprising six representatives from the Ghana Association of Bankers and one from the Bank of Ghana. To other stories, and the Volta Region Police Command has deployed armed policemen to the Akalatra Game Reserve to carry 24-hour surveillance following the wanton felling of rosewood trees in the reserve. Logging in the Akalatra Game Reserve, according to members of the Abutia Development Union, calls for serious investigation as government officials are alleged to be behind the move. Meanwhile, six people have been arrested in the region Region for lumbering and rosewood illegally. Of the driver of an articulated truck with registration number GN3422 11 fully loaded with rosewood logs was also arrested according to the Butia Development Union and members of various Asafo groups. There's been a massive timber exploitation, particularly the rosewood species in the Kalakba Game Reserve. Executives of the Butia Development Union said their independent investigations confirmed that there's a cartel involving state officials behind the exploitation of timber in the forest reserve. To some more stories, and buildings sited on waterways are to be demolished as part of efforts to tackle the perennial flooding in parts of Accra. The Minister for Work and Housing, who made this known when he took his turn at the Middle Press series in Accra, said owners of such buildings should in no way expect any compensation. Here's a report by Salom Amenya. The Works and Housing Minister, Samuel Atachia, expressed grave concern over the situation which he said poses a lot of risk to lives and property. Some people are saying this is a mean-spirited approach in dealing with flats. I beg to differ. If you had a mansion sitting in a waterway and when we have storm rain runoffs and you have flats all over a huge area because of one man's house, 
and people suffer in terms of lives, livelihoods, and properties. It is better for one man's house to go down than the whole community to be flooded. He said the $200 million Greater Accra Resilient and Integrated Development Garrett Project by the World Bank will take off in the first quarter of next year to reduce vulnerability to flooding. On housing, the sector minister announced that government is securing a $51 million credit facility to complete some stored project started by the Kufour regime. This year's project um, um, is geared towards that. that. By all means, and I talk immediately we get the money, we begin to expedite the rollout in Wa. There are several contractors who abandoned the Kufour project because of, I mean, the fact that they were not resourced financially to complete them. He said government is embarking on an eight-year aggressive housing project to put up 250,000 housing units annually. Ghana's housing deficit is currently assessed as well over 2 million. And whereas the annual housing requirement is about 250,000 units, supply figures are about 45,000 units per annum holding all factors constant. It is in the light of this that the government is embarking on a housing program aimed at facilitating construction of 250,000 housing units yearly. He noted that the ministry is also rolling out the slum upgrading project under which Nima and Mamubi will be upgraded into a world-class environment whereby no resident would be dislodged. We are going to build executive flats and housing arrangement for them and then they will move in free of charge so we, we create a better environment for them then the land space you see where they are will be released to the developer and then the developer can decide that i'll make sure that the land space i have will be more glamorous than villaggio which will compensate for the properties that they've released for them. Let's focus on international news now. And China earlier today reportedly surprising weaker growth in retail sales and industrial output for April, adding pressure on Beijing to roll out more stimulus as the trade war with the United States escalates. Now, clothing sales fell for the first time since 2009, suggesting Chinese consumers were growing more worried about the economic activities and even before a U.S. tariff hike on Friday heightened stress in the country struggling exporters. I am Wendy Lai. Thanks for watching. New Day continues. Yep, yep, yep. Good morning. It's a Wednesday. Yeah. <laughs> Good morning, guys. Uh, Midweek uh, edition. Uh, <laughs> just taking off. Good morning. Grateful for your time with us. Like, I don't know why they brought the music <laughs> down because I was dancing. I was enjoying yeah, the song. Nice. I it. like the tune. Oh, what is all we'll, that? We'll bring it back up okay, for you. Yeah, don't worry. <laughs> Good morning. Happy to do that for you. It's Wednesday, midweek. Um, for those who are not too enthusiastic. Today will be a special day for them, but good morning to you. We trust you are very, very fine this morning. Um, Lotto, yeah. mentioning Lotto. I mean, well, I don't remember the last time I saw a Lotto kiosk. Okay. I know they are still around, <laughs> but like a functioning one, because before, when we're younger, I mean, you see people queue up yeah. there, and it was pretty much in every corner. But now I think they've cut down on they the They've been replaced by and drinking sports. And betting, you know, <laughs> yeah, every year. I think super bet and yeah, all of that. So we're back. We're back again. Good morning. Trust you're fine. We are also fine. We don't get problem. Mm. Uh, yeah, at this point. Only that we're Even told if you get problem, how you going to do them? Um? Well, I mean, we're happy that uh, Nima will become another trasaco. Mm -hmm. That's what we're told by the minister. Mm. We pray <laughs> so. I mean, uh, it's, The Nima it's, gata it's has not been done. As for hoping for something, it's there. But whether it becomes a reality is the other thing. Because remember that it also has to do with um, the, the kind of people who have lived there over years and mm. what they've become accustomed to and mm. how, you know, a group of people, we say culture, it's a group, a way of life of a certain group of people. And so if they're not accustomed to certain things, it will be difficult to just 
um, change and expect that within a year or two, everything changes to resemble mm. another locality or another place. And so, yes, we hope that we've all looked for some change so that um, mm. people who live in these areas that are often called slams mm -hmm. would feel a part of Ghana because we don't want that, you know, um, harsh Dis, you know discrepancy mm. between where others live and where certain people live and so we'll be happy but of course again it comes with um, the people who live there changing <sighs> their way of life as well mm. otherwise you see, you see, it will be back if you to if you just the same world say thing. motivational things mm. to the people because this is not the first time we've heard that right. Nima will be upgraded remember when mm -hmm. uh, on, uh, honorable dr mustafa hamid mm -hmm. was a zongo minister he mentioned that they were going to put up some flats. You remember? When he was in uh, okay. Then, then when, uh, no, what do you call it? Back to President Kufo. <laughs> this is not new, no. Mm. You, you remember the Nima High Rise bill? Mm. Absolutely. Right from mm. President Kufo. Absolutely. Right. To, Absolutely. To, to 2000. Absolutely. So it's not. Sure. It's not the first time. So when, when we keep hearing the promises, and like we're told by the CID boss, we're trying to give ourselves hope. Mm. How much hope can we get? Because accommodation is a very big problem in this country. Mm -hmm. I mean, you would save everything you have, mm. and then you carry everything, and go and give to a certain landlord or landlady somewhere. Mm. So it's a big, it's a major problem. Yeah. But we're downplaying it. We're, we're treating it as if it's no, not. it doesn't matter. Exactly. Yeah. And, and you find that, look, many of the young girls who would um, go and cohabit with somebody mm. because they need uh, shelter over mm. their heads, it's not because they want to go and cohabit. No, they don't no. have it's the money. It's because they don't rent. have the money to be able to afford it. Mm. And we keep saying that, oh, they, they, our, our youth are getting badder and badder. <laughs> we need to and, start and, thinking and, and properly. Mm. That, Look, for instance, we are toying with this uh, two-year um, rent. Uh, rent mm. thing. Look, uh, you know the minister actually started with six months. Right. Yeah. He, he failed to, to get it now. Mm. Uh, no, three months. No, six months. Yeah, six months. Now yeah. It's yeah. actually three months, three six months. months. And yeah. then the six months failed. I think he's now looking for three months or the other way around. But you see, Johnny, the, 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 the problem is that that law, when passed, will not work. This is a demand and supply thing. Mm -hmm. mm. Okay. I mean, the, the today, demand outweighs the yes, supply. Exactly. Today, as, as we speak, mm. some landlords and landladies are taking one month regular uh, mm. rent. Right. Others are asking for two years, mm. one year. Mm. Mm. The point is that if Johnny has a house and Amma comes and says, I, uh, Johnny, I want your house. Yeah. And Johnny says, I want one year. And Amma says, I can't, yes, I I can't, I can't afford three. Johnny will tell you that, OK, yeah. you, uh, you, you, you can afford. Exactly. I, I am, yeah. uh, my son is even coming from Togo to come and mm -hmm. live there. OK, so for me, it, 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 let us do a holistic thing. Mm. Take a look at accommodation. Look, I have an advice, and I, I have an advice. Listen, why Nima? Mm. Why Nima? See, Nima has permanent structures. Mm. Okay, let's go to Agbubuloshi, one of the slums that mm. we're trying to upgrade. All right. Agbubuloshi has uh, temporary structures. Absolutely. Can we start from Agbubuloshi instead of Nima? Well, can we? Should we think about it? It's, 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 look, a, it's a good look. It, we we yeah. made effort to get Agbubuloshi to Ajen Kotoku, mm -hmm. and we failed. Okay. Right. The land was there. Uh, what was left was the political will to, to, move. to remove the people and take and them move to them there. Ajen Kotoku. Mm -hmm. We didn't do that. Nima has permanent structures. And mind you, it is not every structure in Nima mm -hmm. that... that looks like a slam mm -hmm. structure. Mm -hmm. Right. There are huge right. mm -hmm. mansions. Exactly. Mm -hmm. People have You want to go and pull that block. one down. There's mm -hmm. only an advice. Can we start from Agbubuloshi, where we have only temporary structures, mm -hmm. take them off, build the high-rise buildings, mm -hmm. and bring them back, so that based on the experience from Agbubuloshi, mm -hmm. we can then go to Nima, uh, Mamobi, Newtown, mm -hmm. and then start doing that. For me, uh, it's an advice. But of course. Will it be taken? Well, That's the point. I, 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 heard, the, I heard the minister yesterday. yesterday. Mm. He himself mm. uh, uh, um, conceded that he didn't have information. He didn't know the cost. Mm. He didn't know how it was to be done. Mm. He didn't know uh, <laughs> uh, 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 how many people live in that mm. area. Mm. Right. He didn't know how many buildings we put up. He said that all is now being worked on. And so we should hold on until. What he told us was that it will start this year. And he did, he's not even sure when it will be completed. So for me, fantastic idea. Mm -hmm. But I'm thinking that I think Agbubuloshi 
mm. will be a better place to start. Well, I mean, I spe speaking of Nima, nice. um, the, you remember the Nima Gata story that I mm. did, the Alhamdu Gata, right. the big one. It's been, it's been a major problem for the people of Nima. So each time it rains, I mean, uh, people have died there mm -hmm. in that gutter because, you know, they are new or right. they li even those who live there. So fix the gutter for mm -hmm. them. Their, their problems are not as magnified as we want to make them Put look. Them. Right. The problems are very simple problems. Mm -hmm. Fix the gutter for them. And I've heard a very ridiculous thing that the MPs are suggesting to the people of Nima to do and they're encouraging them to do. They call it cement your lungu. So, uh, you know, when you go to the Zongo, Lungu Lungu, Kona yeah, Kona. Yeah. Ah, so, cement your, your Lungu. Everyone is pouring cement in there. You're just concreting everywhere. What's so the rationale behind that? I, I'm asking that. Because mm. when it rains, the water cannot seep into the earth. So, it's it just run runs off, off mm -hmm. to a gutter that's not Party. completed. Mm -hmm. And then the mosquitoes and the rubbish, everything built up. The stench around there is so appalling. And I was expecting mm -hmm. the Minister for Works yesterday to, to have that. particularly addressed that matter mm. because this gutter has been done since 1991. Right. Then President Mills came, mm -hmm. he started it, it, it died off. President mm -hmm. uh, uh, Mahama came, it died off. I have not seen any the commitment mm. at this point. Right. And the people of Nima and Mamobi, they vote too. They do. They deserve some attention. Massively, actually. <laughs> so why can't we deal with mm -hmm. the first one and then we are suggesting things that are I almost impossible things. to do. As usual, Why? we always go for the big, you know, solutions but for the see, small problems. Stop rubbing it in the people's faces. Mm. The people have genuine the concern. The it. genuine concern is that, look, they're asking us to cement our lungus. And this construction of, this, of, of the gutter is actually eating away some people's foundation. Mm. So their buildings are gradually coming off. Because the plan is you have a bigger storm drain mm -hmm. and then you have smaller ones connected to it. it. Those yeah. smaller ones have not been connected mm. to it. They have not been even constructed to start the connection. So fix the initial problem for the people. Yeah. Because you are not ready to start the upgrading now. Mm. Anyway. We are talking plenty we hope English. Here. I hope they are awake <laughs> by now and they are listening good, to good us. Morning, <laughs> good morning to you, lawyer Atacha. Uh, there's work to be done at Nima. The Nima Gata is still there. It's a big project. It's a big uh, conversation around Nima and Mamubi. I expected that you would have spoken about that and told us that you have secured some money to be able to complete the Gata. We're told that it's about 92, 93% done. So the seven percent, you finish it, you do it, and you bring some relief to them. I don't know, I'm talking about upgrading. Good okay. morning, sir. So guys, right. what are we talking about today? It's Wednesday, yeah. May 15th, and mm -hmm. we've lined up interesting things for you. Health, we'll be discussing cholera because the <laughs> rains are here with us, and we know where the rains come, diarrhea from cholera. So we'll be talking about that so that you know how to prevent it and at the least manage it. Yes, the and then we'll vendors. also talk about the be startup careful. fair. Be careful. Yeah. The startup fair was Start good fair last year. Funding it was, it was it was it to good. Kumasi it was good. It was very good. I mean, I, I decentralization. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's good. Yeah, we are connecting communities. Mm -hmm. But but they, last year was fantastic, it was, amazing. It was, it was, the it was. kind of reviews that we've had, mm -hmm. the sales that people made, the connection, right. and the summit was so uh, educative. Mm. The, you heard the lady in the yeah. in the uh, yeah. promo. She she said, look, she, she thought she knew how to do it until, she until the there. experts came mm. and they mm. showed her. And it's telling on their business. Yeah. So if you're in Kumasi, don't miss an opportunity to be part of this. And later on in the show, there'll be Naughty Ka. Mm -hmm. He's in the studio with us. But today is 40 years since uh, May 15, 1979. Right? Uh, okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. And, uh, President Rollins, yeah. good morning right. to you, sir. Uh, I'm sure you have memories at this point. Back in the day, uh, leave my men alone. Mm. I'm responsible. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right, right. Are you able to say that? Yeah. Are you able to say that? We want to put that behind us. Yeah. We, we should put it behind us. We should. We I must. Think so. you, you know when there are four boys who go and go to somebody's mango tree and pluck, <laughs> and then they catch them, you know, they start choking each other. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody wants to be the gang leader. <laughs> okay. Anyway, uh, guys. Of course, we'll be talking about the teachers issue yeah. too. Uh, the kind of respect and protection we have for teachers. Daily run this morning gets you a chance to air your views on what has been happening in Siakwa and the other places. Stay here. We're back in a few seconds.
Yeah. Welcome back. Thank you very much for staying with us. We're ranting shortly, but let's say a happy birthday to Philippa Bethy, the songstress. And this is from your husband, Sika and Adum, your children as well. Uh, your husband, KK, says uh, you are the confidant and spiritual Buddha and uh, his Wengeze. Yes, so what he said. <laughs> happy birthday to you. If it's your birthday, happy birthday. We're ranting. Yeah, we're hitting yep, the streets. Yeah, we are. Teachers, teachers and teachers. matters are rising. I think the respect for teachers has waned over the years in terms of what the children, the, the students that are being directly overseen by these teachers are caught them. Because, Johnny, I don't think in our time, mm. I mean, your teachers were your friends to yeah. some extent, but you gave them all the due respect. Exactly. Such that you can't just talk anyhow. You can just do anything mm. to them. But now we've got young people assaulting teachers talking to teachers in a mm. rude manner and I think it's because at some point uh, you know um, punishment system yeah, has you know denigrated yeah. because it's as if you can't touch a child if you do human rights yeah. will come against you, you they, they don't know how to you discipline the children mm. well and you know so I think at some point that may mm. figure in that probably plays a role but mm. for you to actually beat mm. a teacher to mm. death that is terrible. I, I, ag I agree with you and I'm saying that look back in the day we used to go to school early you would go and sweep mm. you clean your desk and and so that kind of communal spirit was then and a sense of patriotism that I need to be part of it to make it work it's no longer that today we're paying for everything the children uh, before they get to school their classroom is swept for them everything is clean for them they eat they don't wash any dishes at school nothing so they just go to school read books get into activities and come back home maybe we need to start rethinking it because on a national scale which is why you will find that somebody will go to a washroom, drop a tissue, and be expecting that there's a certain cleaner somewhere mm. who would come and take care of it, as opposed to him quickly picking it or her quickly picking it. I don't know what it is, but let's hit the streets okay. and rant. The teachers, uh, they are complaining now. One has been murdered already by some students. What is happening? Hello, and welcome to The Daily Rant. My name is Eric Yeoji. A teacher was gruesomely murdered at Isiakwa in the eastern region. Unfortunately, it didn't dominate the headlines, unlike if it were to be an issue around a politician. Now, teachers in Isiakwa have responded. They are seeking mass transfer because they feel that they are not being protected enough. This morning, I've assembled some teachers to look at this worrying issue. It is a daily rant. My name is Eric Yawaje. Let's keep talking. I'm man Ghana. Me hunde yembuti che juma nukra. Usende yao kase bi achaya kade. All professionals can boost, but the teacher taught them all. And she said, "Ende nyimzi yao Ghana na yazina fanani na ano ofri teacher fo ne danda nka kra nka kra nka kra. Teacher onya ban ne zinde mo from a one miwi." Waja wana nwo wo friend and baby ya mofu wo sunya zi ho. Nti wako bo hina menze. Ne bo na waye yi. Na me re ho de. Union sa. Teacher union sa. Huru wa yewo wo manimi. I'm totally disappointed in them. Se me wa kwenya. Nchende yara. O de. Ye collapse all the teacher unions in the country. O san de. Shwa na nansi yara. Watu radio station e biye ni mu. Shwa media houses in the country. The way I wa suja wo zigu. Uh, or man, Nimu, uh, NCA, na uh, government agencies are who want to. Nasa teacher in you, we kun teacher and be a breadwinner, on an orphan, a busianina, my Yabasa and the Oyagan education service. One as a more can there, or your best in ye. Yes, a man, oh, this fifty five year old RME teacher, his death has provoked a lot of conscience. One. What is the security situation of our public basic schools? Go to Azaria, go to Efekuma, Zongo. There's a public school there. They get up in the, in, in the morning before they sweep. There are we, they, they, they smoke we and live there, sniff cocaine and live all sorts of things, and the kids go to sit there. If you go to Sego, there's a public school there, similar to the so What is the security? situation in our basic public school. By extension, this is getting to the personality teacher. If you look at what has happened, it's very clear. The minister has visited there. Fine, good. Ghana Education Service on there. This is a man, 55 years, with three kids. The wife is not working. He is dead. And what we can do is that 
we are we felt that oh they will bury him well everybody has yearned for a fitting a, a befitting burial but we are all in this country when a, a soldier died in the land of his duty and i tell you even we discussed the issue and got to the first anniversary of the soldier's death and we know what we did we're in this country that journalists were whipped we know there was a statement that was made in parliament in this case i'm not going to get one of my teaching colleagues who has metamorphosis as a member of parliament that called the director general and minister of education to make a statement on the state of security on public basic school and the teacher for me i would have wished that not to have been very optional or we disband it they failed teachers for the first time when single span came the, the, the police and anybody listen to me can can bear with that the police use a consultant and tell me you 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 know the kind of remuneration that the police have now somebody moved from 150 Ghana city to 700. this our not leadership whose model superandi is concentrated on deduction of distribution of diaries and deduction of dues are silent and full that it is just a press statement to give to 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 to, to bear with the the family beyond that beyond that ghana journalists association did not treat the closure of two radio stations like they did miracle papa papa a image is there on your asama or the teaching you be biara also won't cry the sabio sabio at the trampo sabio sabio need that room oh eh copy my day my brother and you be some near canoe, teacher in a way we know, near number, no bush enough with your body. Now, teacher union, as at now, statement to group on bay. Even you put there one year bush enough for number power, wage and a chin, you put some of your one year on the bush album. My one year me yet there in Tetu Jane Jan, no worry. By heart, no worry. At Massa, did there. Kufa a motor or your Sicado, Nat, Monimiana the Wabeto, Nagrat, Monimiana the Wabeto, teacher Nino, that one, a bar statement in a warrior. I am challenging them, and I am challenging them there. So, what you are wanting a whole one year, the teachers are also going to rise up against them if they don't know. Because, Sabi Sabi, we are all your yell, Papa, Papa, Namoya me on a day. At the end of the day, who made the parliamentarians? Who made the president a president? Who made the accountant the accountant? Omana ye woman teacher for one and some ye mobile pa or ye gana. Sabio Sabio, eh? Is she teacher Nibia? New school was so hono. A back at the auto ado or kiosk yo a hair and what our foam on our con. Means of transport or a problem. Atomasa, Sabio Sabi Nukotokum, we son. Bibiara and your but my air canada, my wa be ya sama sabu sabu. I was expecting the day. Teacher unions, they would come up with uh, 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 sabu in some out of him in some out of the way. What can one up out of that sabu sabu way moon because a year on yes, you cut it out they don't see it. It's rather unfortunate because you can never underestimate the work of teachers in communities. Um, apart from parents who bring up children. The children spend most of their time in school, from morning 8 a.m. to about 2 p.m. Some parents, even when children are on vacation, they are not happy because they feel the children have to go to school, you know, so that the teachers will continue with their discipline. When they are in the house, they are bedding. Yeah, so they feel they are bedding. So it's like uh, there is some kind of enjoyment uh, or celebrations when school reopens. So it's rather unfortunate that this is happening. And uh, as my brother said, we've really not heard anything from what this teacher organizes. It's unfortunate because. They are supposed to be what the welfare what body for teachers. So we must see them. It's about four days now that this thing happened. So we want to hear something coming from them, some solidarity message to show that they are really there for the welfare, not only uh, kind of when they are supposed to deduct monies from teachers. So it is very uh, problematic. And I feel that the community has what opinion leaders. There are uh, every community has a chief or opinion leaders who uh, have to make sure these things don't happen. Uh, we've had uh, on many occasions where youth have been able to what, uh, kill professionals like this, which is unfortunate. Uh, when uh, this uh, thing happened to Major Mahama last two years, we know what happened. The seriousness that was attached, the present of the nation was there. So I believe uh, all other professionals must be seen you know, uh, to be needed because we, we all say that teachers 
uh, are teachers, but they what they are the people have taught all professionals. Uh, the engineer has been in the classroom before. The doctor has been in the classroom before. So it's really serious. We need to see these things happening so that there are some communities which uh, we should say have gotten some bad names, and even people don't want to accept postings to these places. We must see an end to some of these things because if it doesn't happen, then they are going to deprive the children of that community of getting what the various professionals that are needed to make sure the children become uh, better citizens in future. As a teacher now, one of the clear future of this teacher is that he's a disciplinarian. Ejuma Okwadinu was to protect the integrity of even the school. His innovations as a teacher have brought a snail farm to the school he teach. Then he gets to a stage to protect this as resulted to his death. I want to ask, the beatings of this teacher to death and the beatings of the woman at the bank, what is the difference? But beatings resulted in getting a, 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 a house. It raises questions as to some legal professionals and the kind of cases they take as pro bono. And again, uh, I am also coming from the the point that uh, teachers you know ma osi wo he one one of one out of so many cases in crofun to one report bebre teachers bebre na sometimes in pono wo in one for spiritual way yenim teachers wo ko in crash the wo kwa catch raza because of all pedals here to in jebas na wo se wada na kon wa che na kon ma na kon ni tire kezi na chiri Number from an amount was thrown. Now, me, you crazy, me, teachers, a bien, watch them as a pen. A crufi, or yeah, our wing consuency, honorable Matthias in two, or chamazo, teacher training college. The Marson and Paul MP, honorable Kofi Jacum. Me, you teachers, cry them to you were teachers. Nancha them a quenny when your opportunity nurse awake in your parliament. Now, Juma under the Anna was no, and there. Obinum worries one colleagues, one former colleagues in ya, they should come out and make statement. Albotum water a swimmer. I'm your crown as a I'm your crown as I am the day and teaching your head teacher says the way we so and say, Yam Manizzi on for the end of this kind of uh, atrocities. Yeah, 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 the teachers and and Yam Manizzi on from bravery you cry. Ghana, your mana, Sabio, Sabio. In Sisaya, a ban a horror de guhon. On bois teacher for. On bois teacher for Capem de. Teacher for ye here that security. That security, teacher for ye new. Sesican Sabio Sabio, ye new bank, Nessicanasa, ye ne de Nessicanasa. At the end of the day, doctor, or ye juma abantum genuco school. Teacher ye, a bet charge a ye den waran casan oye de capusica, ne edo coso, or ye umusia ando. That security is not there for teachers. Security situation for basic schools is very important. Then the community's respect for teachers. In basic schools, we have seen that people walk in and go to even assault teachers. You cannot do that in the garrison schools. You can't do that in the Air Force schools. You cannot do that because... We have gotten to a stage that if we don't take time, the lawlessness that is created, we will soon have teachers saving to go and acquire a gun. And if he's maltreated, uh, maltreated in a way he's not interested, we, he, he will also react. We will see teachers training themselves that you assault me, I assault you. Welcome back. The Guardian Times this morning says upgrading of Nima Mamobi to begin by close of year. Uh, you saw that story yesterday, I'm sure. Uh, the Works and Housing Minister. Six teenagers remanded in custody. Uh, murder of head teacher is Siakwa. Uh, that's the story. The BNFT, uh, the issue of dollarization, the Bank of Ghana must not fail us this time. The Bank of Ghana is clamping down on uh, getting items, uh, services. 
uh, paid in dollar denominations or uh, uh, priced in dollar denominations. The Daily Graphic, 12 NI officials sacked the violated Ghana card registration rules and work on Eastern Corridor Road resumes in July. That's the president talking. Daily Guide says Opuni purchased $19.2 million and tested fertilizer. A witness in that case uh, speaking that the finder says petroleum hub tall is vital but needs private technical and financial partners. Senior Halsey uh, talking. To. Those are some of the news I have this morning. My guest to do the talking MP for Ningo Pram Pram, uh, Honorable Sam George is here. Good morning. Very good morning. Yeah. Hope you're doing great. By God's grace. Thanks for joining us. And a member of the CPP, Madam uh, Rodalina Ayana is also here. Good morning too. Good morning. Hope you're doing great too. I'm fine. I'm still waiting for the rep from the NPP, but certainly we'll start our conversation uh, this way. Uh, let's take a look at this NEMA story. Um, we're told that uh, government will commence with the slam upgrading of NEMA and Mamobi in Ayawasu East Municipality of Accra before the close of the year. Minister of Works and Housing, Ms. Atashia, has spoken about this. Now, according to him, all the feasibility studies and the necessary documentations uh, would kickstart the project had been completed and would be submitted to Cabinet for approval in the next Cabinet meeting on Tuesday. The whole engineering and what the developers want to do will be presented to the next Cabinet for consideration and immediately to give us a green light. We'll just begin or uh, bring in the developers and then we'll start. Uh, that's uh, the minister. What he said yesterday was that uh, uh, about 1,039 acres of prime land in Nima, Mamobi, Nigtam will be given uh, meaning and beauty uh, as part of the present vision of inner city and Zongo development. We're told that uh, residents will be moved, high rise buildings uh, put up, and then they will be brought back in. But also, I'm George. Um, the minister says, uh, really, he doesn't have a lot of information because uh, they are at the preparatory stage. But we are also being told that the project is expected to begin by the close of year. Government says it is one of the means to upgrade slums in cities, Accra beginning. Is the right direction? Well, let me say a very good morning to your good self, to Madam Bonalina, and to our viewers. It's interesting hearing some of these promises. Mm. Um, on paper, they, they look good. Um, the concepts look good. But, I mean, on this platform, I've made the point that we have a president who basically is a soundbite, who's running a soundbite government. So you get to see and hear the very fantastic things that would happen. But actualization is a completely different thing. Um, yesterday, I listened to the minister himself, Honorable Samuel Atacha, um, on a different platform when he was asked even how much it will cost. And he said, I don't know, because the president was the one who announced this first. Now, you have a sector minister who is asked categorically, who is speaking to the media. This was after he had done a meet the press. He did a meet the press at right. the Ministry of Information. And is being asked about what's supposed to be a flagship program. He doesn't know the cost. We are told the program will roll out at the end of the year. <laughs> you want to roll out a program, you don't even know how much it's going to cost. Don't forget, we have a history of this government or this political ideology telling us the rollout programs without showing us the cost or telling us the cost, and we always see problems. You see the challenges the free SHS has gone through. Remember when Nana Dedanko Akufado had his BBC interview and he was asked, how much will it cost? He couldn't tell. He said he would come and tell the Ghanaian people. He never told us till we are in the mess we are in today. Today we are being told that they are going to have villaggio style houses. <laughs> um, do they have an idea how much an apartment costs in villaggio? And is that supposed to mean that the current residents of Nima are going to be kicked out? So are we basically privatizing? Are we selling the residents of people who have lived in those areas for years? Would they be able to afford? the cost of villaggio style houses. He said they were moving free. That's what the minister said. I, I heard him yesterday. Yeah. And, and, and he says that, you see, he, he, I can't take the minister seriously because he's not shown me any seriousness with his commentary post this flowery ad announcement. Because you say you are going to construct houses. Are you constructing council flats? And you see, when you go to Europe, you've got what you call the council flats. You've got the 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 high-end apartments also. When you use Villaggio, 
as an example. In Ghana, we have what you can call the cancel flats. There are dental snit flats, the dentoman flats. Those are our own version of cancel flats. So you don't tell us you're building something along those lines, but you say you're building something like Villagio, and you're giving this to private developers. Private developers will not build and allow you move in for free. That's a lie. I mean, let's call it a, let's call it a spirit. And tomorrow, I don't want the minister to come back and tell us that he was only giving us hope. Because, I mean, at the end of the day, let's be realistic. There is no private developer in Ghana today who would develop apartments like Villagio in Villagio style and allow you to move in for free. It's not true. It's a lie. And look, the track so, record so of this government. Uh, I'm sorry, hold on. So uh, where he says that, uh, about the cost, he says that um, it, will, it is going to be a blend of technology and engineering works utilizing the 1,039 acre land. Therefore, the cost will be determined at the end of the day. It, does it answer your It makes your no sense. I'm an engineer by, by profession. Mm. You don't start a project. And look, you can't start a project without knowing the cost of the project. That is the most irresponsible thing anybody will say. I told you, it's all flowery English. What he said there, a mix of engineering and technology, what's the meaning of that? What's the meaning of that? You must know how much everybody who is even going, if you are even going to build your own two-bedroom boys' quarters or bungalow, you know how much it will cost you. Mm. You have a fair idea how much it will cost you. The minister doesn't know how much the project will cost. When you don't know how much the project will cost, how then do you determine that it is going to be free? How then do you determine that government is even going to bear the cost of it? Look, don't forget this is a minister who came and told us in parliament. Yeah? Mm. He said this in Parliament at the beginning of this year, that by the end of this year, the people of Nima will, for the first time in their lives, be able to use toilets that they can flush. This is what the same minister said in January of this year, January or February of this year, in Parliament. So that is his thinking of the people of Nima. Don't forget this same government, in November last year, announced with pomp and pageantry a program to teach the people of Nima and other Zangos across the country how to prepare Wache and Sobolo. Ask yourself, that program that was launched, have you heard anything today? That program was under the auspices of the inner city and Zongo's ministry. Mm. Have you heard of any of the training programs that we were told will happen? Now we are being told again that this is in line with the president's vision to what? To renovate and, 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 upgrade, and, and slums. upgrade slums. Don't forget, the NPP has a track record. If you take the NPP's okay. manifesto, and I'll land here, the NPP's yeah, manifesto here. of 2000, they promised to turn NIMA into high rises. They promised to make chop bars world-class restaurants. We saw what happened for eight years. Today, you have the president again come and tell you, the president's track record in Nima is the, the, shops, the shop owners whose shops had been there for 25 years in front of his residence. That because he became president, he said they had become security risk to him. He cleared them. He's clearing out Nima again to bring in his bourgeois friends. That's exactly what this is going to be. I see. <sighs> <clears throat> Madam Ayana, so upgrading slums isn't a bad idea at all. It's not. No, it's not. Upgrading, good morning, Ghana. Mm. Upgrading slums isn't a bad idea. But when you suddenly wake up one morning and some, someone says, I'm going to upgrade, but I don't know how much it's going to cost me, or I don't know where the money is going to come from, then you ask questions. Here we are with Sodom and Gomorrah, or old Fadama, right. for that Agbo matter. Agbo Bleshi. Upgrade. Look at that place, it's got economic value, looking at the landscaping and everything. But if you're running away from that, and running away from the one, um, what, the hostels that you actually promised, Kaya Ye, which has not seen the light of day, and you're not telling us that you're going to build high rise or whatever in Nima, I want to ask, first and foremost, where are you going to settle the people before those high rises? Have you made available? Because um, if you're looking at the Singaporean uh, uh, idea, look when you built houses before moving them from the slums. He didn't just get up and say, let's go. No, he built the town, then moved the people in there. Mm -hmm. So I would have loved to have heard him say that I have acquired this acreage of land here, and I am putting up these buildings. Those who would want to go, this is where you go. Those who would want, because that is what happened when they were building the Nima Highway. People were given choices. You were either paid to leave, or you were given a new place at Medina, which is Lahey. 
That was what happened before they got the chance to do the Nima Highway. So in the same vein, if you're, if you're telling me that you want to put up these houses, I want to know how. Are you going to put up houses somewhere, move them in, before putting up these other structures you're talking about, the Villachot style um, houses? You see, I think that our president is beginning to be shy of his neighbors. And he's trying to get that scenario of a bourgeoisie area springing up from Nima. If he wants that, he must say so. Because I don't see how he's going to really get this thing done. Without building somewhere else for the indigents. Um, we're looking at Nima Mamobi. Yes, Nima Mamobi New Town. That's the end of uh, two yeah. minutes. Nima Mamobi New Town. That's mm. not the only place that has slums. Sukura. There's Shukura there. Uh, town Council line. So many other places. How about them? Why is he so fixated on Nima? Is it because of the fact that he feels that he needs the Muslims and he needs the, 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 the Zongo community and therefore you can just come out and spew all kinds of stories? I don't think these people are going to take him seriously. Because I, I have not, we've not had any meetings that have been held with the Zongo community. Else we would have heard that this is what he intended to do. What we were told by the formation of the Zongo um, uh, ministry. ministry was for them to upgrade. Yes, upgrade means giving them better sewage services. You know, Nima deserves that, to have better sewage systems, better uh, road networks, better lightning. The housing will come. It might surprise him to know that some of the, the buildings inside Nima mm. are not as bad as you would find mm. in other the, urban, the urban areas. Buildings in Nima. Yes, in Nima. Three, four story yes, and, and sometimes uh, somebody will say, "Don't mind the engine," you know, but don't mind the body, mind the engine, no, whatever. Yeah. Because you can see some of those houses, and you think that they look like slums and things. You walk in there, you know. So when I even heard the honourable minister saying the people were going to flash tell us, I said, "You don't know Nima," and this has convinced me that they don't know Nima. And uh, Nima is predominantly an Islamic community, mm. even though it's cosmopolitan sort of in, in, in look. And there are certain things that when you're going to do, you have to sit with the people themselves, the stakeholders, to find out what kind of structures, you know, whether you're going to have, uh, I just don't understand. Villaggio, I, I think that this thing has been around for a while. People have talked about Nima being a very nice area, low lying. Um, that would be fantastic to be used for um, these kinds of development projects. And this time around, he wants to move them so that his house will look in better or be set up in a, in a better vein. Um, I'm not convinced. I think this is just one of the promises that will not come to fusion. Okay. Let, let me just quickly add something to this. You see, we must, as a people, learn from other jurisdictions. I will not call Nima a slum because Nima in itself is not technically a slum. Like, because Nima has some of the fine plannings that you need. Of, of, of They have layouts, they've got water, they've got electricity, they've got... What we need to do is improve on the social infrastructure of Nima. Like you said, the drainage system. How, what are the drainage systems they're looking like? Mm -hmm. I mean, those are the things that we need to look at. You go to places like Brazil, and they have what they call the favelas. What the government has done with Brazil moving from a third world country. They have improved structure in the favelas. They've not cut the favelas out. Mm. They've not, because you see, it's a part of who you are. People come to this country and Nima is an, is an, is an experience for them. There's a certain way of life in Nima. Our president has prided himself as a Nima boy. Why does he want to change what Nima is known for? What you need to do is improve the social infrastructure there. Ensure that there are proper layouts there. Ensure that if people have built in, in areas that would affect, for example, in the unfortunate event of a fire, mm -hmm. and the fire tender has to go in there, make sure that those layouts are clearly done. Make sure that water gets to every nook and cranny. It's extended from where it is now to every home in there. Ensure that you have proper drainage, that when it rains, Nima will not get flooded. There are storm drains. The president wants to build high-rises there. He's been president for two and a half years. The president Mahama administration started the Nima storm drain that you see when you're on the Nima highway. It was, it was about 80% completed before he took over office. Since he took over office, he stopped the contractor. The contractor was stopped from working. They've not completed the Nima drain. You can't complete the Nima drain. And you say you want to come and build villager houses. Okay.
Let's go to the Guardian Times. Page 12 says that uh, the NCS action against Radio Code, uh, Radio XYZ, others is to muffle pro-opposition media. That's according to the Media Foundation for West Africa. Uh, it described the NCS shutting down some pro-opposition uh, radio stations as arbitrary and capricious. Though the foundation is in support of attempts to enforce the law, it was important to point out in all cases where states have sought to uh, repress sections of the media. Uh, in that statement, the uh, media foundation condemned the authorities' use of armed police to shut down uh, stations, uh, Radio Good, Radio XYZ, and others on May 10, and said the use of armed police officers for conduct of exercise was typical of how authorities in repressive regimes would always seek to muffle pro-opposition media. The manner in which the radio stations were shut down could have been justified if the stations had been notified to shut down and had been recalcitrant in complying with such orders. That's the story in the Ghanaian time. Madam, how do we deal with this? Enforcing the law and ensuring that the media is operating uh, in a free environment. Um, it's okay to enforce the law. Mm. And I think that it's the right thing to do in the law. But when, when you go out or you set out to do that, um, do it with a, a bit of a human face. I was not happy at the way that they shut down XYZ, not too far from my house. And I was asking myself why. I was just watching um, this press conference of the NDC and the next thing I knew it was off. I was on one of your, you know, your stations, mm. I think it was Joy. And then I tried getting to my radio, and then someone sent me a message that XYZ is also off. And I said, why couldn't they just do it another day? Why couldn't they just wait? But you see, it all boils down to the fact that um, businesses or the media have taken things for granted for too long. I had listened to the Honorable Minority Leader, uh, Harun Idrisu, trying to uh, impugn that at the, at the time that they were in government, um, certain media houses did not have the requisite requirements or whatever, right. but they were allowed to continue. But that's wrong. It's against the law. Yeah, that is wrong. I mean, the fact of the matter is that if you're supposed to do um, certain things, you abide by those laws. So, but you should not also, as a body, a regulator, be selective. Because from what everybody else is, is thinking, you are being selective towards pro-NDC stations, which might not be what you, you, you actually you intend to do. You intended to do. But it just so happened that these were the ones that you went and shut down. And people are asking, give us a list of all the radio stations, or all the media houses that have made up, you know, they've um, paid for their licenses, they've paid for whatever. Let's know how many other ones have been shut down apart from this um, these stations belonging to the so purported to belong to NDC. Um, I think the Media Foundation has a point because there is no reason why in this era of democracy we should gag mm. any media house. And that's by the fact that it is flouting a rule. Yeah, that's by the regulation. fact that it's, you, you you have to make you see, um, freedom of speech is essential for any democracy. So you don't have to make laws and regulations and give out all manner of things that will strangulate them. Um, if, you're, if you're asking people to pay um, 10,000 a month or 10,000 per day for lack of paying um, uh, licenses, when we do know that even to get advertisements, media works by advertisements, and some of these media houses are so small that they cannot even pay for those advertisements. Um, or even receive those advertisements. And then you're looking at um, the various, let's look at the various TV stations. I, I, I know of a TV station that has practically, actually released all their workers. They're just on because a Because they can't pay them. They can't pay them. And, and, and it affected TV3 as well. You had to let go some people. Other media houses had to let go some people. So where is the freedom of speech? If, if you're gagging us by giving us such exorbitant uh, uh, fees to pay, that you know is going to be difficult for very small units to pay, then definitely what you're doing is actually using a back door to gag them. That's the way I see it. So maybe we should have um, the media houses categorized so that we know those that are really receiving good 
adverts, mm. those that are doing well, and those that are just there in, in a social setting to give information. But I think that um, the media, that's the Media, the media Foundation, Foundation for, for West, West Africa, Africa, the GJA, and the NMC, and the NCA should all sit mm. and talk about this, because we do not want a situation where you wake up and you don't have a choice of radio or media for that matter. Um, it's also necessary that we let media houses know that you're supposed to abide by the law, mm. regardless of whether you are pro-government or whatever. Because at the end of the day, this is a situation where your, your, your government cannot save you. Mm. You understand? So if you're in government, it doesn't mean you don't pay taxes. And that is what has been bothering this country. Businesses do not pay taxes when they, they are you know, supposed parties are in power. It is wrong. You're supposed to be doing the right things. But there, there are rules and regulations governing this, this, mm. these, these things. And there are laws that ought to be obeyed. So I think that um, as a people, we should start what um, sticking to the law. Uh, and get people to obey them. Yes, and obeying the law. OK, I'm grateful. Uh, I Sam George, I mean, uh, this, the, the, the issue now is uh, obeying the law and, and making sure that uh, me, the media is working in a free environment. The Media Foundation of West Africa is suggesting that what happened there uh, was arbitrary and capricious. You, you think so? Look, this whole issue is one that we may not even have the time to, to, to delve into properly because there are several angles to it. First one has to do with the law in question that we suggest is, is being flouted. That's the, the law is that, on licensing. Absolutely. Is that law actually in conformity with our 1992 constitution? Article 1623 of the 1992 constitution makes it explicitly clear that there shall be no requirement for a license for anybody to operate a media house in this country. Clear. But parliament passes a law that then says that to operate a radio station, you must have a license. Mm -hmm. President Akufuado, in 1994, was lawyer for Radio I, Charles Riku Brobe, and Albert Kandapa, who were arrested by the Rawlings administration for running Radio I without authorization. His argument then, has it changed today? Mm -hmm. You then have the Electronic Communications Act Act 775 of 2008 being passed. And you take section 13 of that act and it talks, it talks they, they, they are careful in trying, parliament at that time was careful and the government at the time that brought the bill was careful to try and circumvent the constitution and they don't call it license. They say it is frequency authorization. What is an authorization and what is a license? Now, they tell you that, and I agree, I've worked in the community of communication before. I understand what the NCA is saying, that you are operating via spectrum. Right. Spectrum is a finite national resource. Agreed. Even that technically today with digital technology is debatable. But let's even ag agree for the purposes of this discussion that spectrum is a finite national resource. Are you aware, and you should be because you run a, TV, a radio station, that all the radio stations do not just pay fee to the NCA. Frequency station fee, which these radio stations have been shut down for not be for not renewing, they are asked to renew them every five years. But every year, every year, you pay what is called a spectrum user fee. So if you are paying a yearly fee for the spectrum, for usage of the spectrum, which is a finite national resource, you have applied and you've been given a license or a frequency authorization. They call it frequency authorization in, in, in their in the law. Right. If you've paid for that. Why do you renew a frequency authorization when you pay the spectrum charge every year? Again, let's ask ourselves. You say some of the radio stations since 1997 or since 2000 or since 2002 have not renewed after five years their, their, their license of frequency authorization. But they have not renewed that. But in the sixth year after they have not renewed after five years, you took their spectrum user fee. At the end of the year. At the end of the year. And every year when they come to pay, you collect it. Is that not the religion of duty? And you see, let us be clear. Our laws may be fantastic, but many times our laws are not, especially in the IT space and technology space, technology is very dynamic. Mm. 
Our laws are not up to date. When you passed the law, the Electronic Communication Act in 2008, and you did the amendments again using because of the CST and all of that, you have not taken into cognizance the realities and practicalities of the media landscape today. Haruna made the case on news file, Honorable Haruna, and technically so, that if you want to use the law stricto, stricto sensu, <laughs> you would shut down almost every media house in this country. You know why? We have, we have a, a limitation on frequency broadcast. It's also in the law. Mm -hmm. That you must not broadcast. When you depend on your cl class, class A license holder, you shouldn't go beyond 45 kilometers. Mm -hmm. Almost all of you, including your media house. When you, when you drive outside Accra, outside the 45 kilometers, we listen. So should we say we are shutting you down? That's, you that's see, NCA's job to deal with. Too. No, but you see, the reality of the question is, you ask yourself, you thrive on advertisement. You are in an industry that is struggling because the market is saturated. And so if we restrict it to 45 kilometers, what do you then, when you are, your marketing team is going to sell, what is the catchment area you are selling to? How realistic is it for you to meet and, 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 and meet your overhead cost? So these are issues. Now the NCA's action is based on the Electronic Communication Tribunal's ruling. Mm. <laughs> Look, the ECT's ruling, and again, I am shocked at the media houses. They've taken this for granted. The media houses should have challenged the ECT's ruling. The ECT aired, the tribunal aired in its ruling. The tribunal's ruling was that, and I have the ruling here, by respectable people. I mean, my board chair when I was at the N National IT Agency uh, uh, board, Dr. Professor, Professor Kuenu, he's somebody I have a lot of technical respect for. Justice Dateban, fantastic lawyer. Who sat in the tribunal? Absolutely. But the tribunal aired, because the tribunal's ruling that you cannot renew a license after it has expired. It's flawed in so common you logic. You have to apply for a new one. It's, 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 it's flawed in common logic. Can you go and re I'm coming. Can you re go to the passport office today without your passport expiring and say you want to renew a passport? Or without your driver's license expiring, can you go and say you are renewing? You don't renew something that is still valid. You renew something that has expired. Okay. And so the argument that because the licenses or the frequency authorizations had expired, and the media houses had not renewed them before expiry. The media houses have no right to then put in a renewal request. But they must asking now for the same frequency. Asking, but they must now apply as new agencies if flouts common logic. So, so, so this is a conversation that must be uh, uh, done on, uh, in a broader context. Absolutely not because these two stations and others. Have I, been I mean, these two stations. So we must, this, we must the, the, start this, this conversation. We, we must have a national discussion on this. What is in the yes. constitution? However, and what is in the, the modus law. operandi mm -hmm. and the way the shutdowns were done. It's what has brought in the political twist. Okay. That you see, you pick these two media houses. And look, I can give you, I've pulled off the, own, the NCA. This is not my own document. If you go to the NCA's website, there are 48 functional radio stations in Accra. As we speak, based on the NCA's own documentation, mm -hmm. out of the 48 radio stations, only 11 have renewed and have met the criteria that they are setting in for the... In Accra. In Accra, alone. NCA says and, that and, in and so the question Accra, you should it's ask only two. It said Radio Gold and x -Men. It's not true. This is on well, their website. From their website. You can go, Atlantis FM, they got their first date of authorization on the 13th of December 1995. They've not renewed it, it as per their own. Their own Radio Gold, 7th of, of September 1995, not renewed. Life FM, they got it on the 17th of, of September 1995. They renewed for the first time, or their last date of renewal was 1st of April 2015. So all of this is there. Kasapa okay. FM has not renewed as we speak. Radio Adan has not renewed. Sunny FM has not renewed. Radio France International just renewed. The BBC has not renewed its frequency. As per the, the documents there. These are okay. all documentation that is... Exactly. It is from their website. Okay. They have not done it. Even 3FM. 3FM. They said you got your license on the 25th of February zero, uh, 2002, and as far as that document shows, you've not renewed the authorization. All of these media houses are still functional. Why do you then send armed men? And who says that you need armed men okay, to right. go and shut down a radio station? Right. In the uh, middle uh, Mr. of said the kind of work that was done. It's a normal operation. Not Anytime true. they go in to do that, that's they have not true. Men there. I mean, I, like I said, I've worked at the I've worked at the Ministry of Communications before. This is not true. Okay. We have we have actually not seen instances where we've actually gone to shut down a radio station. There were times when the NDC was in power, and there were issues with Oman FM. There were issues with Daily Guide. We didn't go and shut them down. I'm grateful. And even the, and, and last one, last one. When you take the NCA's Act, the Electronic Communication Act, Act 775, that sets them up. The NCA has broken the law. Because the act states clearly that when you want to revoke a station's license, 
you must write to them officially and give them a 30 day notice you must then offer them the opportunity to come and remedy that breach you must hear their side of the story mm. the nca wrote to the media houses and the next day went ahead to do this they broke they broke their own act. okay let's see how the lawyers of the stations will take it but uh, i mean i can read the Foundation, relevant portions of the of the uh, eca to you on, on, on how to revoke a uh, license it is to matter pro opposition media let me introduce my third guest richard santi yabo is a member of the npp richard good morning the late and richard hope, uh, santi yabo good yeah, i'm good i'm um, good i thought originally i was in schedule uh, for okay. this you program. had to Step and in. so we need to come in to okay. sort of salvage the situation we're because grateful. there was a hitch up. We're grateful you've joined us. Supposed to come. We're grateful you And I've been listening to my, yes, my brother exactly. with some of his the, false claims. Yes, the, the and media all foundation kinds of is suggesting that what happened uh, is just to muffle or stop proposition media from operating. I, I think it saddens my heart that uh, we have civil society organizations that have in recent times started preaching lawlessness in this country. I cannot understand that. And I think a good number of Ghanaians cannot appreciate and understand the sort of stance that have been taken by some of these uh, civil society organizations. We ought not to do that. What are the laws for? The laws are supposed to regulate us in terms of the way we conduct ourselves That's and right. run businesses and conduct our activities. Bear in mind, these radio entities are business entities. They are supposed to be profit-making institutions. They make money for their owners. These, for instance, let me uh, uh, settle on uh, Radio Gold and uh, uh, this uh, XYZ, because they have become a topical issue now. We know that Radio Gold got its license as far back as uh, uh, 1995, thereabout. From that era to 2000, they have not, they, there were several opportunities for them to renew their license. They mm -hmm. never took that opportunity. Countless number of letters were written to these institutions particularly Radio Good, because they have been in existence for quite a long time. And they paid their fears to that. My brother, 2000, a letter was written to uh, Radio Good, Network Broadcast, as it's registered, to renew their licenses. They failed to do so. Fast forward, 29th September, similar letter was written by NC to Broadcast, to renew their authorization, they failed to do that. And they granted them 30 days period for them to put together from, their... From when, 95? I'm talking about, I'm giving you the sequence of events. Okay. It, it came into being 3rd October, 1995. In uh, uh, 2nd October, 2000, a letter was written to them to renew their authorization. They failed to take advantage of that. September uh, 29th, 2008, similar letter was sent to Radio Gold to renew the alliances. An additional 30 days was given to them to put together their documentation. They failed to take advantage of that. 28th October, 2008, letter was sent to them. They failed to take similar advantage of that opposition too. Even when President Mills was in power, August 25th, 2009, that was an NDC. Remember, the focus of Radio Gold and its activities have been to promote the NDC and, 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 and the activities of every, anything that NDC is for. Even when President Mills was in power, when the country was being run by the NDC, they wrote letters to them. That was 25th of August, 2009, asking them to renew the authorization. They failed to take advantage because they thought that we were living in a jungle. So they decided not to take advantage of that. September 25th, 2009, another letter was sent. They did not take advantage of it. 29th, they reminded them again. It moves on to June 2016. Letter was sent to them. President Mahama was in power. Asking them to renew the authorization. Because the point is that it's the finest national resources. You are using it for businesses. The other uh, government is supposed to benefit, or the country is supposed yeah. to benefit. Obviously, the contribution you make will be used for other purposes. They failed to do that. 23rd June 2017, letter was sent to them. And subsequently, NCA decided to take actions and decided to ask them to pay some penalty. Remember, people were crying about the fines. And they went to court under the umbrella body, Giba. And the ruling of the court came in. And the ruling suggests that, one, 
these institutions are not existing per the laws because they fail to renew their license and per that per the laws they do not exist. So you cannot ask something that do not exist to pay any fine. So they are not going to pay. They are not supposed to pay those fines that were heaped on them. So that one they celebrated. Then uh, because of the ruling of the court, it meant that the court suggested if they want to operate, they need to go back to NCA and take further authorization before they can uh, operate. In this part of the uh, uh, judgment, here the NDC is crying wolf. So you cannot probate and approbate at the same time. When it comes to these matters, you ought to take the judgment of the court, hook, line, and sink, and apply it. Mm. But when it comes to a uh, radio station, you are saying that, oh, we need to allow them to do whatever they want. My brother, as we speak, the station that are suffering these consequences is not only uh, 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 Radio Gold and SYZ. There are other stations in other regions that are suffering similar fate. How many do you know? At the moment, I know about 15 of them. They have all been shut down? Yes. They are not in operation. Some of them are aligned to the MPP. Some of them, they are private business owners. Some of them, some religious institutions that have established them. So when you come in and you are given opportunity to explain matters to people, a lawmaker, take your time. Because indeed, you no, people make I'm the laws. I'm not going to let you no, go down. No, you people I mean, make the laws. You, you, so you, we you, expect you, that. You are quite ignorant uh, about uh, this. Uh, please, 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 don't come and tell me as a lawmaker. See, 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 see the arrogance we talk about. I'll come to you. See the arrogance we talk about. You see the arrogance we talk about. I think you can make your point without. What point did he give me? When the man was speaking, no, no, right, right, right. I think it's something to this point. Right, right, right. It's a fact. Right, 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 right. I Richard, please, I am in charge of the program. This conduct here. Down. When he was speaking, that, I sat here and looked. And I allow him to lie. I allow him to do all kinds okay. of things. Please, please, Richard. He sat here, you mean, please. when I was coming, monitoring oh, the platform. Richard, please calm down. Literally, when he was insulted, he was the president of the land. What was the insult? My brother, when he was speaking, I never came. I said, what was the insult? When he got to this Nima issue and the president and the government trying to redevelop the place and not uh, 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 sucking the people from the area, making sure we build for the people to stay in there so they can have a decent accommodation. The kind of description he painted. Is that insult? The kind of description a, a, and the thing that he said. View? Do you understand that? Richard, and right, 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 Johnny, let's right, take some right, comment. Right, 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 Richard, I, I right, 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 Johnny, Your microphones are off, so nobody can hear you. Well, we'll start off uh, well, a chronology of what Tilapia has been telling us. The Tiwa Savage report, where the CID boss told us that she knows where the girls are, and the parents were excited about it. Then, subsequently, she came, and then it was Pilolo, so she, she couldn't tell where the girls are, and says, we know where the girls are. Then you can tell that she's going down the, the wall. And then a key question comes up, asking Tiwa Savage, so when? And at this point, the parents are worried. It says, Madam, our girls are still not back as promised. And then a final one that says, uh, it's not Tiwa Savage anymore. It's Tiwa Salvage, the motivational speaker. And it says that the police motivators presents uh, hope to rescue. And uh, hope to rescue Ahua. We know where the girls are is to give you hope. But it's almost 40 days after that declaration was made and the girls have still not been found. Good morning. Good morning, Johnny. John from our boss says, Once upon a time when a camel was jumping and playing around a king's daughter and a male sheep stood unconcerned. Accidentally, the camel stepped uh, and killed the child. Now, Ram must slaughter, be slaughtered for the burial. This is who uh, is behaving unconcerned in what MPP and Anna are doing. Uh, now, she know that they will surely benefit from the outcome. Do you know that close, uh, closure of two radio stations, uh, again, believed to be an affiliate of NDC, aside XYZ and Gold at Angloga, that's uh, Hugbe and uh, Dabala, where we're really in crisis, that's what you're saying. From 
correct score Zakaria in Sunyani says the clueless and incompetent Akufuado government has failed Ghanaians. Insecurity and corruption everywhere. Incompetent CID boss cannot run away from her tape to cover up the corrupt appointees. NIA malpractice, no intimidation can stop the NDC from a sense of critique of this incompetent, impotent Akufuado government. Shame, shame, shame. 2020 is around the corner, you say. TV3 helpers, the people of Jirapa Zongo community have been living in darkness for the past one and a half, uh, two weeks, uh, just because of the faulty transmitter which has uh, ever happened in 2018. As I sent you this information this morning, I uh, did that blindly because I cannot watch your program. So I'm sorry about that. I'm sure ECG will come to you. Uh, PDS will come to you. Mujiz uh, Mohammed in Tamale says, Good morning, Bright and Johnny. Me, my mom will be world-class residential area. I refuse with all my strength to get excited over just uh, because uh, another slogan has been announced. Babamu in Tamale says, In fact, I'm disappointed the Honorable Sam George's tangent of analysis of the issue. So, Honorable Sam George is trying to say that the Nima community doesn't deserve better or what. Anyway, this government is committed to make Ghana an uh, interesting and lovely place. Moreover, President Kufado is able to deliver 80% of his promises. Good morning. Uh, good morning, Bright and Entire TV3. I hear uh, from politicians saying, uh, I will do this, I'll do that for Zongos. I weep. Who says Zongos are poor? Anyway, Zongos made ourselves useless, letting the politicians get uh, take us for a ride. We like businesses than going to school. In, in fact, the reason is which which is why uh, we look like we're poor. But let's show politicians that we're capable of transforming our lives. Akundo in Kumasi. Walanyo Anakwitia says, my brother, what's the heck uh, is Sam George, uh, well, I can't get it now, Sam George, if the minister says he is going to build an ultra-modern housing facility for our brothers and sisters in the Zongo communities. Is he demonstrating skin pain, uh, gesture here or what? Zongo communities deserve even more than that if your previous NDC government ignored the plight and now things are changing for them. This one too you are opposing. You are an engineer, so what? Okay. Uh, the intolerance of the, this government is reflecting in the action of state institutions. MPP can use NCA to close down radio stations affiliated to the NDC. Still, NDC will win 2020 hands down. Osman Brooks. Nanado should stop flattering us with his lies about making Mambobi and Nima world class residential areas because the Mambobi Nima gardens have still not been completed. And you are promising us the upgrading of the slums. What happened to the Zongo youth that were trained on how to cook and make sobolo? What is the fate of such uh, an initiative? Akufuado should stop telling us lies. And finally, good morning, TV3. I live at Nima, God have mercy this gov on this government. Uh, are they serious or just a uh, drama? MPP and the government should go away. We don't want, uh, we don't hear them. Uh, they are doing nothing since, uh, they've done nothing since they came to power. Lies, lies, lies. They are only looking for money in Ghana. Mutala Macho. And uh, Alaji Hamza and Pigbam says, for God, can someone tell the CID boss to stop talking and produce the three missing girls? This was someone who told the whole world that they have the girls in their custody and they will be sent uh, to their various families very soon. The same woman later in an interview said that uh, she simply was giving hope to the parents of the missing girls. The CID boss should stop playing with her emotions. I don't think she is fit for the post. She must be sacked. Oh, uh, she must resign herself, right? I thank you very much. Okay, Johnny, we're grateful for your comment. Keep them coming. We will uh, be getting to read them. But unfortunately, we have to wrap up the conversation. We are hitting the top of the hour. And uh, we couldn't have uh, talked uh, about well, the Johnny, if you dollarization. Me, uh, sorry, I said, Johnny, right. If you uh, give me 30 seconds, I just want to read the ruling of the, of of the tribunal. Yes. Uh, uh, the the uh, ruling of the tribunal uh, uh, says, right, accordingly, right, I'm, I'm grounds sure B, C, and D uh, 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 are by this means. I'm, 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 I'm reading. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not going to make it. I'm just reading. He came in to interrupt Accordingly, grounds B, C, so and D are hereby dismissed. To make my submission. For the reasons given in the tribunal's right. discussion yeah. of ground A, Richard, right. the, on, on the principle of fairness. No, but I'm saying the appeal is... I was making my submission. The appeal is allowed on ground The appeal is allowed on ground A. In respect, the at least allow some judge to finish. I will do that, but you have to equally give me the time to the, make my submission. The appeal is allowed on ground A in respect of all the appellants, bar one, and the penalties imposed on all the appellants, with the exception of Network Broadcasting Company, which is Radio Gold, are hereby quashed. That's the fines that were imposed. Mm. The appeal of Network Broadcasting Company is allowed on the ground of procedural impropriety. And therefore, the penalty is also quashed. Now, on the, the pro procedural impropriety they speak about here was introduced by the tribunal. It wasn't a defense by any of the appellants. And in the concluding paragraph, this is what it says. The issue is to be determined 
The issue to be determined is whether network broadcasting company on the facts act is narrated underground A above was given an adequate opportunity to respond to the decision of the respondents, the NCA, to charge it with the offense of failure to apply for a renewal of his authorization before its expiry. The evidence on this is rather scanty. However, the tribunal is not satisfied that the company, that's Radio Gold, was given an adequate opportunity. Best practice will be for the respondent, NCA, to invite a prospective subject of a penalty to show cause why it should not be penalized for a particular offense. For the tribunal to uphold the penalty imposed on the company in this case, there has to be evidence on record showing that the company was given an opportunity to respond to the offense charge before the levying of the penalty. Okay. There is inadequate evidence on this. Accordingly, the penalty imposed on Network Broadcasting Company Limited so is also quite... But this a is the tribunal. But this is the penalty, right? Okay. Let me do something. Let me read something. Let me read something. Hold on, I am coming to you. Okay. But Madam Roda, please wrap up for me before I go to you. Well, I think that we all have to agree that freedom of speech is enshrined in our constitution, freedom for information enshrined, and therefore we should not do anything that would make people feel that we are being gagged as a, as a, a country and that the um, culture of silence is coming back into our fold. Um, I also would want to say that at the end of it all, we all hope that um, we could get good places for our, our indigents and our um, citizens, that's NEMA, um, but we should be realistic when we are making promises. Um, for a government that has come and we've not seen any housing project that it has done, and to come up and suddenly just say they're going to give um, some kind of villacho style housing to NEMA makes me feel like you're just taking the people for a ride. So I think that the president should come again. Probably it's something that he's dreaming of, but it's not going to be um, a reality in his first term. Grateful. Richard, now you can wrap up. I think, but let me read this first one. So the court heard that. The need to obtain authorization before operating a radio station was reasonably required for the protection of national security, public order, public morality, and the reputation and the rights of freedom of others within the meaning of the article. The article 164. Mm. I said, let the NDC understand that the frequencies that have been given to radio stations that are affiliated to their membership and all that is not inheritance bequeathed to them by their ancestors. That is where there are laws that ought to be followed. So those who have just acquired several of them and they refuse to do their, they do the need for by paying what is due the state and the nation, right, they need to know business. that. No, the, second one, the second no, one, the second no, one, the yes, second one. The yes, second one says, I allowed him. Yes, yes, why yes, is that? Some, you allow him, I'm wrapping up. Second one, second one. You allow him, allow him. The second one, the second point. I allowed you, what kind of behavior is that? You are being unruly this morning. Samja, you allow. You pay state. You are being unruly this morning, so stop that. Richard, go on. Right, the second point. I mean, what is you wrong if government decides to put up housing to help the good people of Nima and Mamoudi? What is wrong with that? Well, they, they did not say it is wrong. I mean, what, what, what you're who says that the government that? has not uh, put up any housing infrastructure since this government has been offered? Where? Say you Where? are not aware. Where? Where? Say, Where? say, no, no, Where? please, please. I allowed you. See, you see, you see, see that's your problem. Us. That's your problem. I don't answer oh, to you. Oh, they're getting it. Oh. So the mere fact that you are not aware do not guarantee you to make. I mean, the point is that do not allow you to make those comments. Second, second, respect your view. Second, second, second. I'm not the only zone. Right, you know, you know, you know the funny thing. Where? I will let him say. Right, right, right. When we came in, when we came in, we met what President Kufuor started. We met others that President Mahama started. We decided to complete all of them. So you have to complete them. Where? But, so uh, no, but you, but you see, where? What, no, wait, 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 where? wait. Okay. wait. Beyond right. that, beyond where? that. Where? Uh, Richard, I'm grateful. Not, you, you're not aware. You are not, you're not aware. Uh, uh, I'm grateful. We are not right, aware. Right, uh, right, right, if you right, tell, if you right, tell right, us so which one, I'm wrapped up. I'm grateful. We are asking you to be a member of the MPP. Sam George is a member of the MPP. Madam Rodayana is a member of the CPP. Gentlemen and lady, I am grateful for your Wednesday morning. Thanks so much for joining us. There's more coming up on the show. Stay right here. We have sports up next. The whole self for the company.
Welcome back. You're still here with us on New Day, and it's time for us to talk about our health. We're talking about cholera because the rains are back in season, and everybody must know about cholera and how to deal with it and what it looks like, how it manifests. We've been talking about it for many years, but it's important that we remind ourselves of what this canker is. Joining me to discuss this issue on Skype is Doc DSP Dr. Faisal Ayambila. Good morning, Faisal. Good morning, Anama. And how good are you? Morning, I'm okay, doing fine. And how are you doing too? We're doing well. And it's good to have you because obviously you're not in Ghana with us. So talking about cholera today reminds you that you're coming back to Ghana very soon. Definitely that's the case. And um, uh, good morning to our cherished listeners. Good morning. Viewers, actually. Great. Yeah. Faisal, let's talk about cholera because, I mean, it's something that we talk about year in, year out. I don't think it's new to any Ghanaian. But what exactly is it that makes us, you know, talk so much about cholera and what we need to know about it in this current dispensation? Uh, well, Nanama, I would always say it's, it's, I find it's quite embarrassing that mm. we'll be talking about cholera in 2019. Yeah. <laughs> but as you said, it's a very common disease with high prevalence um, in Ghana. When you look at the, the cholera, it's actually an infection of the small intestines. And what happens is there's this bacterium or germ called vibro cholerae mm -hmm. that finds itself into the food we eat and causes us to have all sorts of symptoms mm -hmm. like diarrhea and vomiting that could actually be life-threatening. Right. And so it's a matter of public concern because whenever the outbreaks occur, we do lose a lot of precious lives and people fall very ill. Mm. So it's something that we always have to talk about. And the sad part, as you rightly said, is that the rains are here with us mm. again. And so chances are we would be having an outbreak very soon. So what, I mean, try and tie in the relationship between the rain and the outbreaks because it's always when the rains come that we you know tend to have a surge in the numbers but maybe people don't understand that correlation can you draw a clear line for us the truth is that there's always some amount of cholera in the background mm -hmm. every single day whether in the dry season hamatan or any time of the year that we do have some cases but what happens with the rains is the rain comes in with of course lots of flooding lots of water and you already know we have a lot of um uh, difficulty with our sewage system, with our toilet facilities and all of that. So with the rain hmm. as a facilitator, the bacterium that would be sort of in one location can find itself in a different location in the right. sense that this bacteria are located in fecal material. So if the water we begin to drink or the food we begin to eat gets contaminated by the bacterium, then we have a surge in the number of cases. Hmm. So the rain just brings in flooding and the flooding goes in into our very bad toilet facilities, sadly to say, and, you know, just creates the medium for the cholera bacterium to be propagated. Right. So, I mean, for most of us, we get diarrhea, we vomit once in a while, and it seems to be normal. Yes. What makes the vomiting and diarrhea associated with cholera so special? <laughs> it's, it's sad because um, mm. what happens in cholera is it's actually a toxigenic type of bacteria. Mm. And... To say that it's a special type because it's more harmful than the regular um, diarrhea and vomiting we would usually have. Right. This bacterium is so virulent that it actually goes into the small intestines mm -hmm. and causes that level of irritation. It takes me back to when I first met um, a patient who had just finished about three hours prior to coming to the hospital. Right. Then it dawned on me that, wow, this is a very very um, severe form of diarrhea and vomiting. Mm -hmm. The patient would literally go to the bathroom as so many times to the point that the stool begins to look just like pale, pale water and nothing in it. That's what we usually we would refer to as the rice water stool. Right. And so it's life-threatening. It's mm. an extreme form of what we are usually used to. Mm. So what are some of the effects of having this form of severe diarrhea and vomiting that is associated with cholera? The symptoms, of course, would range from mild to severe. Mm. In the mild forms of cholera, you would have, let's say, three or four days of passing loose to with some vomiting and abdominal pain. Mm. That really shouldn't cause a lot of trouble. Mm. But in the very severe forms, as I mentioned um, a few minutes ago, in the very severe forms, even just about two hours after eating your food, you could have a very explosive form of um, diarrhea that would cause 
you to lose almost all the water in your body. So then you begin to have this bluish discoloration of the skin. Mm. Some people cannot even talk to you anymore. Some can't breathe well. Some become, let's say, comatose, for want of a better word, mm. in the sense that they wouldn't even respond to your voice anymore. And all that leads to death because mm. um, of the depletion of the water on such a large scale of body water. Very well. So now that we know a bit about cholera, how do we prevent it? Yes, the cholera is the perfect example of how sometimes health and diseases tie in intrinsically with um, poverty, economic indicators, and things like that. Because I was look, reading through the literature, and it says that the last cholera outbreak we had in the U.S. was in 1910, 1910 And here we are in 2019 talking about cholera because it happens every year. The biggest thing we'll have to do is to prevent it, of course. And the prevention has to do with... Um, Simple techniques like hand washing, you wash mm -hmm. your hands before you eat, make sure your food is always hot. And the funny thing is, usually in times when we have cholera, the number one food is, is wache. And I think it has to do with the salad that is on top of it, that mm. is not properly cooked. Fine. And so you'd want to make sure your food is warm, you've washed your hands before you eat, you practice um, good toilet hygiene. Mm. But on a larger scale, on a national or regional scale, we need to have better water facilities. We need to have better management of fecal material. Mm. Because the sad truth is that cholera, a person would get cholera just because he has, he or she has gotten in contact with someone else's fecal material, right. which is rather embarrassing. <laughs> and so supposing you identify, what, I mean, what advice would you give people in this particular time? Should we wait until the person is passing so much loose stools before we send them to the hospital or immediately anyone complains of diarrhea and vomiting, you head to the hospital? The truth is um, there should be a lot of sensitization. And of course, um, TV3 always makes this possible through the New Day program. Mm -hmm. In the sense that people would always wait and say, oh, this one is nothing, it's regular diarrhea. Mm. Please, I think once the, the person has passed over three three times of loose stool, three episodes of loose stool, the person should be sent to the hospital. They may or may not be vomiting, right. but in this time when you you can't entirely be sure mm -hmm. what it is, it's it's safer to get the patient to the hospital, especially the school children mm -hmm. who go to school sometimes in the school and and. Uh, you know, under the notion that they would be taken home at about 2 o'clock and all of that. As soon as the diarrhea starts, we should see the person in the hospital because cholera could take a life within two hours, mm. which is, yes. And whilst we wait, supposing you're, I, I mean, I would want to speak for those who probably don't have transportation to the nearest facility. Whilst you're waiting, what sort of first aid can you provide to anyone having this form of diarrhea or vomiting? Yes, it's very important we talk about this because, of course, it's not every situation where you could readily rush someone to the hospital. Mm -hmm. What you could do is administer um, the oral rehydration salts, which are very popular in our context. Mm -hmm. In the absence of the regularly, the pharmaceutically prepared brands, there are preparations that would use regular salt at home and sugar with certain amounts of water to prepare a, a sort of rehydration solution to help people combat the effects of the diarrhea. Mm. But if in all this, these things are all so difficult for you to get at that point, even coconut water does the trick mm -hmm. sometimes, especially in children, mm -hmm. or any form of water, anything that is available to keep the patient rehydrated would be of appreciable value at that time. Great. Finally, Faisal, let's talk about the hand washing techniques because this is another <laughs> problem, you know, in Ghana. We talk about it all the time and we assume everyone knows how to do it. But walk us through a proper hand washing technique and what it entails. Okay, so, um, okay, let me see. Let me look out for my hands. My <laughs> hands are here. We always have this joke that people would, would wash their hands properly only after they have eaten, when they have food on their hands. But mm -hmm. you would want to wash your hands to the extent that you can get into all these um, spaces between the fingers, mm -hmm. it should be a process that will take close to about two minutes. You must be patient enough to have the soap go around all the hands, all the way, mm -hmm. if possible, in the hospital context, we would even say all the way to the elbow would be appreciated. But if you are unable to do the full hand washing, at least make sure that the appreciable areas of your hands that would get in contact with food should be properly cleaned and of mm. course hand washing should be done immediately after you leave the bathroom and of course after just before no i said after but just before you have your meals 
you should properly wash your hands. We take this thing for granted, but mm -hmm. cholera can affect anyone from the person working out in the hot sun to the person in the suit and tie in the office. Well, let me say thank you to you, DSP Dr. Faisal Ayambila, for joining us to discuss this very important topic. We hope that this discussion will help to reduce the number of cases that will be reported in this year, in this particular rainy times. But on that note, we'll take a break. We'll be back with more here on New Day. We'll be talking about the Startup Fair and Summit. Make sure you stay with us. There's a lot coming up. You don't want to change the station because you're having the best breakfast in the whole of Ghana coming from New Day here at TV Fee. Make sure you stay with us. We'll take a break. We'll be back with more. Stay with us. Well, 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 you've heard so much noise about the Startup Fair and Summit that Media General organizes. Last year we did it, this year is back with a big bang. And I'm sure you want to find out what exactly is it, what are we talking about. Joining me in studio to discuss this and more, I've got Veronica Fosuhima Uswansa. She's Brands and Communications Manager for Quick Angels Limited. I've also got Richard Ni Amakwe, CEO of Quick Angels Limited. And Sedem Ofori, he's Head of Corporate Affairs here at Media General. Good morning, gentlemen and lady. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. So let me start off with you, Sedem, because clearly you are the, you know, organizing team. And so we want to find out what is it about the startup fair this year? Well, uh, it's new, new location, new okay. feel, uh, new exhibitors. And uh, it's even more powerful hmm. in comparison to the previous one which we had last year at the Aviation okay. Social Center. I believe you'd be asking me about where it's going to happen. Mm -hmm. uh, but this is a fair that allows for young businesses, okay. SMEs, startups, people who have spent time poring over how, what gaps there are in the society, uh, problems that they can solve and make a business of. This is a platform, the biggest platform for them to be able to do the exhibition. And leveraging the strength of TV3, uh, 3 FM, Onyo FM, Akuma FM, mm -hmm. uh, Connect FM, and 3news.com, we are deploying our full energy giving it a publicity. Hmm. What did we get from last year that has pushed us to think we should continue in the same stead? Last year's program was tremendous. Hmm. The response, judging from the response from our patrons, the exhibitors, and the general public, it was amazing. Hmm. Uh, it tested our organizational capacity with respect to organizing uh, programs with startup fairs on that large scale. And right. I think that we came out uh, with a very high score. Okay. Excellent, actually. Uh, so uh, we, we, we are coming again this year, and we are doing it better. Very well. We'll come to the timelines very soon, but let's engage Richard and Veronica here. So Quick Angels Limited, when we, what, what exactly are you into? All right, so Quick Angels Limited is an angel investor company. Okay. We are the, it's a formal angel, angel investor company, first of its kind, of its kind in Ghana. Mm. And we are here to provide support to startups and young businesses. Okay, so how long have you been in existence? Because for people listening, they'll want to find out what kind of support are we going to be getting if you are, I mean, with the kind of work you're doing, how do we go about it? So they just want to know a little about you. Where are you located? How long have you been there? So we have been in existence this year. Okay. 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 And we are here to provide the most important funding. Right. Funding. Hmm. Because we understand that um, in our country today, if young men and women graduate from the universities That's with brilliant right. and, 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 and smart business ideas, right. you ask yourself this question, mm. where do they go to? Mm. Because without capital, they are unable to kickstart or Thank start you. their entrepreneurial dreams. Right. In the current economy that we have, mm. where do these people go to? Mm. Absolutely nowhere for them to okay. go to. And that is the kind of space that uh, Quick Angels have come to fill. Right. We want to provide them the opportunity to bring their innovative ideas mm. to rest. Okay. There are young businesses that are struggling to rest, so that we, we assist them with funding mm. and the necessary networking and expertise that they will need to be able to execute these dreams and, and, and push our nation forward. Nice. So for you, Veronica, obviously you are the Brands and Communications Manager, so you would be best to answer this. Where do you think, I mean, he's spoken about how you're going to support with the funding and all that, but why do you think it's so important, particularly when people don't understand that sitting up in our ecosystem at this point in time? Okay, so let me use this opportunity to recommend um, Media General for this initiative. Okay. I think it is great, mm. and we at Quick Angels are not oblivious to the 
<clears throat> sorry nature of such as an entrepreneur is the mm -hmm. challenge that they go through right. in order to be able to be seen to be known with their product and services mm -hmm. as such we decided we thought that this is a platform that will bring them all together okay. um, for them to display their product and services goods mm -hmm. everything this is also the platform for them to, I mean, let people know who they are. Right. As such, we said, okay, why not we come to you? Because this startup sometimes just needs just the funds or mm. the money mm. to be able to get to the next stage. Right. And so we want to interact with them. This is a time for us to meet them, mm. to say, we are new in the system. We are here for you. We are your best angel investors. What we are going to do is, if you have the smart idea, if you have that brilliant entrepreneurial dream that you are executing, but lack that fund, we are here for you. So once we go to Kumar, we interact with them, we see them, we let them know what we are offering. Mm -hmm. So if you know those people who lack funds and want to take funds from us, we give them. And we also want to let them know that we, are, we have a lot of um, people who support with funds, but you have to pay them, um, pay back and all that, which right. gives a lot of stress mm -hmm. to these entrepreneurs and that. Right. With Quick Angels Limited, we don't do that. We don't mm -hmm. take money, we don't take anything from you. All we say is come to us, let us know that brilliant idea. Let us know that brilliant business that you already have that we would support. And in the long haul or long term, we take equity stake basically. So we just want to be partners in what you do. We will support you with every fund that we you need. We don't take any money, any collateral, nothing. Wow. Just have that brilliant idea. Walk to our office at Circle and we will meet you. We specifically wanted to join this particular session because we thought we are moving from Accra to mm. another landscape, let me yes. say, to Kumasi, and it's another target of people. Right. And we want to target, we are, we are doing nationwide. Okay. Every region will take a turn. And so Kumasi, we are coming. Mm. Quick Angels is a new product, a new company that's coming on board. We are in going to support. But let me, let, let me, you know, throw this in because you've got the opportunity to reassure people why they should come to you. And my question to you is in this particular terrain where now we're not too sure where to go for help, you are talking about funding them fully, I mean, supporting them 100%. And it seems too good to be true, but you've got angels in your name, so I'm sure you can whip up some magic. But how do you go about it, funding yourself to be able to fund them as well? Okay, so I'm sure my boss will come in at, at, at mm. a point. So if you say angel investors, mm. we basically um, invest in your business in the long term, take okay. equity stake. Okay. Now, before an angel investor will invest in your business, mm. we might have know the business, the module, scale up, know your, I mean, the money that you will need in the long term, short term. We right. are patient okay. and we would support. <laughs> now, Quick Angels Limited has a mother company that you can trust. So we operate Quick Credit. Wow. Quick Credit, um, I would say currently in Ghana, we do not have a, an, um, a body that regulates um, a microfinance or savings that only give out loans. Okay. So we've been added to the many that would I mean, do the give and take. But Quick Credit actually give loans. It's been 10 years in the system. Okay. They only give loans. And as it stands currently, they have 23,000 clients that we have our money's worth. Mm. So you can, so th this is the background that mm. we are coming from. Great. My boss is an entrepreneur with mm. 10 years experience. And trust me, we are ready. A lot of people ask, do you have the, 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 the money that you'll be doing? Because a lot of people will be coming in. Okay. Trust me, we are you ready. I think he'll, 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 he'll <laughs> Richard, take so just add there. your final words to that. Angel investors are individuals okay. or people with ideal fans that are willing and ready to invest in um, startups and unproven businesses okay. to benefit in the long term. Right. Okay, when these people come to us, um, they will they will come and meet our experts in the office. Mm. All they've got to do is to bring their business plan. Mm. If they have, if you don't have, no problem. You could still come to our office. Our staffs would help you prepare a business plan at no cost at all. You only have to um, prove to us that whatever business idea you have yes, or whatever startup you have hmm. is economically viable. And once it is viable, we will do the um, financial analysis of it. And if it's okay, it will be recommended to me. Okay. Now, I would have to meet this entrepreneur. Hmm. And you know, and angel investors will say, I would bet on 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 the jockey and not the horse mm. so this entrepreneur would have to come and prove to me why i need to invest my pocket money mm. into his business right. these are the things i'll be looking out for mm. that entrepreneur would have to be a confident person mm. he has to believe in himself he should be able to uh, have the leadership qualities that will be required to navigate this business mm. he must have the necessary skills to be able to execute this business idea okay. of course i would have to convince myself mm. that he has the integrity <laughs> right. that would help us to be good partners right. okay one thing you must know that 
angel investors are very, very key and important to startups mm. because angel investors don't only bring money on board. They bring their expertise and bring their networking on board right. because not until this business that we are investing into succeeds and survives and makes, pro and makes profit, mm. we are not making anything. Right. So we rise with them mm. and we fall with them. Okay. That is why angel investors are common in most advanced economies okay. and that is why many businesses are thriving over there mm. because from the beginning, they don't go to banks to borrow money and seek for debt financing right. because debt financing will not help businesses mm. to grow. If you, if you start your business up with debt in it, these are the challenges. Mm. You, you will lack the freedom mm. to be able to, 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 to take some risk, right. to be able to explore, to be able to research, to be able to uh, uh, invest in re research mm. and, and development. So all your focus will be divided as an entrepreneur to meeting this, your repayment. Right. And that in itself would, would in the long, in the business. short, will cripple their yeah. business, okay? Yeah. So angel investors, you do not worry at all about any, any of these things. The angels bear all that worry they for you. They bear all that worry <laughs> for you, okay? And they are going Very to make sure that they do everything possible within their means to, mean make, sure to make sure you survive, you succeed, right. and your business thrive. Well, I like the passion business. with which Richard speaks, and I'm sure that's why many people should be there. But yes. finally, to you, Sedem, tell us where it's taking place, when, and how we can access it. Well, it's happening in Kumasi. Mm -hmm. And it's happening at the car park of the Kumasi Mall. Incidentally, okay. that is where we have uh, our radio station also at Kuma mm -hmm. FM. It's just adjacent. Okay. So you don't want to miss out on this one. It's happening from the Friday, the 17th of May okay. to Sunday, 19th May. And it's coming to Kumasi. It's coming to Kumasi for two reasons. One, because there's popular demand. Okay. Many of the exhibitors we had last mm -hmm. year and the patrons asked that we bring it to Kumasi. Right. Kumasi is an important business mm -hmm. hub. It's like the second largest, uh, mm -hmm. most buoyant okay. business right. hub that we have uh, in Ghana. Mm -hmm. So we are coming to Kumasi. We have a long-standing relationship also with Kumasi and the Ashanti region, mm -hmm. uh, one that stretches back to our very inception. Mm -hmm. Most importantly also, as I mentioned earlier, we have a media footprint there. Okay. Um, TV3 is the most preferred mm -hmm. uh, television choice in the whole of Ashanti region. Okay. Uh, and then also 3FM, uh, sorry, um, Akuma. Akuma FM uh, is doing great works. Mm. It's going to be close to where we are having a fair. It's okay. happening again at the car park of uh, Mall. the Kumasi Mall. You don't want to miss out on this one, especially also not just for the businesses who are there to exhibit, mm. but those with money mm. looking for an opportunity to invest for the long term. Uh, it isn't all of us who have the grits to be able to start a business of our mm -hmm. own. So here you have an opportunity to see those who are going to own the future. Right. Here's the opportunity to invest in them. So what registration processes should take place before the day? If I want to exhibit my product or come there, what do I do? How do I go about it? Oh, it's really easy. Uh, we've, we've published the numbers and the mm -hmm. platforms, the emails that you can reach us on. Currently, we have close to 60 companies, uh, startups and SMEs who have registered to partake in this program. Uh, I believe that the commercial will be playing and we're giving you all the other details that you need, the WhatsApp mm. numbers you can reach us on, uh, the email addresses that you can reach us on, mm. etc. It's all available for because we're hard pressed for time. On this yes, certainly. I know we are hard pressed. <laughs> All this is happening, but we'll certainly talk about it again before the day, which is yes. Friday. And so make sure you're tuned into New Day because we'll bring you all of it. And all our other platforms will be talking about the Startup Fair and Summit that will be taking place in Kumasi from Friday to Sunday this week. And make sure you're there. What better opportunity when you've got Veronica and Richard here to tell you what Quick Angels has for you. And many other companies like theirs will be there. I have been speaking to Sedem Ofori. He is Head of Corporate Affairs here at Media General. Veronica Ofosuhima also and Sub Brands and Communications Manager for Quick Angels Limited and also Richard Ni Amakwe, CEO of Quick Angels Limited. On that note, we'll take a quick break. We'll be back with more here. Do stay with us. Yep. And Wabanotika is in studio and we're catching up with him. Good morning. How are you? Great. Mother's Day was just last Sunday. Yeah, yeah, what yeah. did you do for your mom? <laughs> I took her out. Oh, nice. Yeah. Are you a good boy? Yeah. I'm a Are you a mommy's girl. boy? <laughs> but it's only Mother's Day you take mommy out. No, I, I usually. It's regular. Them, yeah. Well done. But Nautica, let's catch up. What kind of music are you into? I'm into um, hip life and high life music. Okay. Yeah. And how long have you been on the scene? Um, for like um, five years now. Hmm. Yeah. Are you doing music full time? Yeah, I'm doing music. So, what drove you into the musical space? Where's your passion from? Okay. Um, then I used to play football, but I thought, uh, and I and I also had a passion for music. But then I felt the passion for the music is stronger than the football, and I felt I was more gifted with the music than football. So, I just started to 
go and do the music because I felt I had stronger passion for it. And are you satisfied doing the music now? Yeah. Do you feel fulfilled? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm very satisfied. But someone will say, I mean, in Ghana, maybe one stream of income is not good enough. So why didn't you balance the two? Because footballers, they make cool cash. Uh, yeah, you know, I, I will leave everything to do music, but I, I don't think I'll leave the music and play football. Okay. So putting both together will be difficult for mm. me. Yeah. But tell me about the music industry in Ghana as of now. Where do you see it going? And with you and the space that you've occupied, do you see yourself progressing? Do you see any future in it at all? Yeah, I see a um, future in the music industry, but it's, uh, it's, 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 it's coming gradually. Okay. So, yeah, I think uh, the people out there should have patience okay. for the people in the industry because it's not easy hmm. to, you know, make it to the top hmm. and they are working really hard for us so oh. yeah I, I say they are doing well and for me my stance in the in the industry now I think is okay hmm. so what do you like about music what, what where do you get that kick from what is it about the whole music thing because I also sing it's just I do that in my bathroom but you have decided to take it make it a job yeah. so what inspires you to there um because you know I'm gifted okay. with that and working with your passion mm. I think is, is the best okay. so going to work or working um, towards my music mm. I think is the best for me okay. yeah because that's where I strongly have the passion is it easy to make music and sell it um, when you have the talent it's it, it doesn't take much okay. to do it but to sell it now <laughs> is the problem mm. yes because it will take a lot of promotion and a lot of connections to get out there but is music really selling in the sense that in the olden days we used to buy cassettes, we used to buy CDs, but everything seems to be on my your money, money out of the music, of the music. <laughs> yes so yeah you you just need to do the hard work okay. give them the good works and you make some money out of it but my thing is doesn't generate as much as you put in if you put in a, a lot of work you will generate a lot of income how easy is it for you to write a song um for me it's, it's for me because Studio, I see yeah, a beat playing, something just coming to my mind, and I just put them on the beat. I like the one that's playing in the background. I hear it's titled Problem. Yeah. Why Problem? Um, what my, is your problem? My problem is, is promotion. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed, it is, eh? Yeah. Okay. You know, everybody got his own, their own problem, mm. but this song is to tell you that no matter what your problem, just keep on moving um, um, forward and okay. everything is going to be well okay. you know put your problems aside sometimes and just you know enjoy life but is it that easy as you say in the song it's not Can easy but it's going to be harder if mm. you keep on thinking about okay. it but if you sometimes put it aside and go out of your shell maybe you might meet an opportunity mm. you know if mm. you should go out feel free than being indoors and thinking about your problems mm. Who's your mentor? Who do you look up to? Obrafo. Obrafo. Yeah. Brabsofo. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> so do you plan on doing any collabos with yeah, him? Yeah, very soon. Okay. Yeah, very soon. And that's in the pipeline. Yeah, it is. So VGMAs yeah. are coming up. Yeah. In the near future, are we expecting you to pick up some awards? Yeah. Um, um, I'm expecting an award or a nomination um, next year because last year i i didn't really work a, a lot so this year i'm not counting myself in but okay. next year I, I think i should win something when it comes to the females who would you want to have a collaboration with efia efia yeah mm, why what is it about efia um because i do more of high life okay and it's very calm music okay. so and i like her, her style okay. she's calm on the beat and all that so that's the reason why i want to put it on but music in ghana musica that brings me to it and the the management yeah. well they're changing hands very soon but yeah. since you've been in the music industry what can you say about musica what would you want them to do in the near future what would you want to see musica doing for you artists um I would, I would like them to support the artists like based on our royalties and because if there's no money 
we cannot move because you know we need to go to the studio and do what i know they cannot put uh, monies into everybody's pocket but at least those that are doing the hard work and it's being played out there they should try and let them have what they deserve well nautica so finally what do you have for us um i want to tell uh, the people out there to keep supporting the nautica brand and to follow me because i have some good high life and hip life stuff that i want to put out there but before you go, the name Nautica. Because when you say Nautica, that's water, sea. Yeah, it's because stuff. I'm coming from the poor side. I'm ah. coming from Tema. Oh. Yeah, so that is it. <laughs> nice name. Anyway, it's been fun catching up with you. We yeah. wish you all the best Thank in the you. music space. We Thank want you to win more awards and keep hearing your name and become a household name. Yeah. Anyway, guys, that's how the cookie crumbles <laughs> on the favorite morning show, New Day. It's been myself, Bright and Johnny bringing it to you. But that's all time will allow us. Tomorrow, we'll be back on your screens from 6 a.m to 9 a.m. Make sure you make time with us. Have a blessed day. Go out there and be productive and make sure you're doing the best you can for Mother Ghana. <laughs>